know there's nothing wrong with brown and round, but sometimes some work, uh, use some embellishing with the texturing tool can really kick it up and add a little pizzazz uh, to it. So in this video I want to show you how to, to use this uh, rotary texturing tool which uses a, a Dremel burr to, in just, in just moments, uh, uh, do some texturing that, that'll, that'll add a little pizzazz to, your, to some of your work. Hi y'all, I'm Mike Peace. I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, techniques, and projects to help you become a better wood turner. Okay, this first project I'm going to use uh, Burmese black wood. It's very, very hard wood. Not as hard as African black wood, but it's a heck of a lot uh, uh, cheaper. So I thought I'd show you how it'd work on a very tough wood. You want to sand it to the very finish, finish grit. So on a wood like this, you go to at least 400, but uh, you might even want to go up to 500 or, or 600. Uh, this is going to be a nice insert for a, for a box, so if we get a nice pattern, I'll just part it off. Wax residue off. Okay, so first thing I'm going to try with this is I'm going to use this cylinder right in the middle. It's not, this is not my favorite burr, but we want to try all of them, and I want to experiment as well. So I'm going to engage it on the corner. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it, but we're going to see what happens. And that's given a nice uh, tiny little pattern. I kind of like that. Uh, so before we go any further, we're going to punch that up just a little bit with a with a point tool before we go on to the next one because we're going to layer this one with, uh, with different patterns. So I'm going to come in right on each side, give it that picture frame, just right, right there, and right there, and that, that punches it up. Now for the next trick, I'm going to use this cove tool. Remember this is just a tool at 45 degree angle, one quarter inch or seven, seven millimeter uh, rod. Some folks use drill rod, but I, you can get that high speed steel cheap enough that I think that works a little better. So we're going to use this kind of a negative rig scraper and we're going to make us a tiny little cove in here. And I'm going to make it a, a fairly wide cove and I think I got a pretty clean cut but I'm just going to clean that up a little bit with this uh, 400 with a little sanding lubricant on it just to kind of polish it up a little bit. Okay, let's swap out the burr. So for this one we're going to use the flame burr. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's very similar in appearance to the uh, round ball. I think the pattern will be similar except it'll be a longer pattern. So we want to make the cove that it's going to ride in just to uh, you know, the right shape to accommodate it. We're going to keep this pointed up a little bit and you don't dig in straight in. You've got to come in from the side. And I think this will give us a little longer pattern. Remember we're going to use a speed of oh, somewhere around 800. And this is pretty tough wood so we're going to have to hold it in place and give it a chance to, uh, to do, its, do its thing. slowly leaning it around to fill up that cove. I'll give you a close-up of this when we finish. Uh, it did not give me the look that I was expecting. Uh, not sure that it gave me the look that I really like, but I think it'll be okay. We'll just get again to try it again. We'll just add a boundary to this and just keep layering it. We've got to get that speed up again for this scraper to put in the little tiny little picture frame. Okay, so now we're going to put in another cove. You can see the fine shavings coming off of this. Again, put that little bit of 400. Slow it 
down. We're going to come in here with this round burr this time. Drop the tool rest a little bit. We want to be cutting right on center. Okay. Uh, what I'm getting is an overlapping in the pattern, so it, it's looking okay, but it's just not looking as deep and pronounced as I like. But that's still not a not a bad pattern at all. So let's go ahead and put a frame on that one. Okay, so now uh, to really help this, if this was the inside of a box, I think a little bit of uh, gilt, gilt cream would look real good on it. I'm going to put, even though it's a very hard wood and very dense, uh, I want to seal any grain I might have. So I'm going to put on some sanding sealer before we actually come back and use that gilt cream. I think you can see that pattern and probably show up even better with this uh, sanding sealer on it. This Mylans, uh, I really like. I've been using it for years. It's pretty pricey stuff. It comes from England, but it, it works real well, and I don't use a lot of it. I use it mostly for small little projects and usually only one little coat. So actually, to, I'll be truthful with you, a can will last me for years. The beauty of this, because, uh, because it's a uh, lacquer, uh, thinner uh, as a solvent, it dries super fast, which is one of the beauties of it. You can put this on a box, put in two coats, and be done with it in a couple of minutes. We're just going to friction it off a little bit faster, and I think you can see. Now let's go ahead and get some of that uh, that gilt cream. I got some kind of green, uh, patina green. I got some copper, and I got some gold. I think I'm partial to gold uh, in this Chromacraft accent paste. So we're going to try that, and I'm just going to use my fingers so you don't get too much on it. And I'm just going to rub this liberally over the whole thing to get it in place. Get it in every little crevice. We'll give that just a second to dry. And we're just gonna and this is where that having that sanding sealer on it keeps it from getting into the end grain. Uh, and I'm just gonna touch the areas where it's just just the wood mostly and not the texture and I think that's just a, a pretty elegant pretty elegant look so now I'm gonna part this off now before I part it off I'm going to taper it just a little bit back back here so when I go to put it in a box with a recess it'll go the smaller end will go first and it'll get tighter as it, as it moves in uh, and that just seems to work better for me. So let me take a, uh, probably a, a skew and just get speed up a little bit and just taper this back just a little bit here. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel, incline it in the direction of the cut. And this is subtle, it's not a very deep, uh, deep uh, chamfer, if you will. And then I'm just going to put this in a little box and save it for that occasion when I've got, got a light colored box. So I'm going to use my Sorby Nick Cook parting tool with the fangs on it. And This makes for a real fine, fine uh, detail cut. So I'm only going to make this uh, just barely, maybe a little over 16th inch, maybe two, three millimeter at best wide. I'm gonna... Still come back and take a relief cut. I don't 
use this tool a whole lot, uh, but it is handy. It makes it for a very fine cut. Usually I don't need a cut that, that fine, so my, my little cheapy Penn State 1 16th of an inch works well. But it's got a pretty short handle and it doesn't leverage real well. So this one is really nice when you're doing a one-handed cut because you've got some, got some real leverage, leverage on it, uh, which works out real real well. So there's my little wafer. I'll just put that in the in the drawer for the for the right occasion. Okay, let's switch to a little bowl sample. This is a dried Bradford pear bowl that I've had a couple of years and it's warped quite quite a bit. Uh, we're going to put it on and reverse it against uh, as a, using a friction jam using this little block. So I kind of shape the this little spindle scrap uh, round that'll fit on the bottom and then we'll put a little pad of uh, uh, some fun foam. So here we are, we've got it mounted. Now we're uh, truing up the uh, tenon. It had really gone oval. I'm using a detail spindle gouge to clean it up and bring it, bring it across. Probably won't fit in normal jaws. I'll have to use a smaller chug. So now we're taking out the side. You can see from the uh, ghost image that it really is out of round as we clean up the outside. And we'll do a little texturing on the outside. I've marked a couple of uh, rings up in the upper upper third, uh, away from the edge because the edge has really gone oval. So we're we're going to use the uh, burr, and we're adjusting the tool height. And now we just come across with that burr, having to adjust the speed a little bit. Now we put some real pressure on it. I'm pulling it with my left hand. I'm rubbing on a little Mylan sanding sealer, hoping it'll make it pop, make it easier for y'all to see on the screen, but it didn't really help. Now and then right here. And then right next to it. Turn that into a fine little bead. That's a tends to be a nice little detail having that bead. Now I'm switching to a, a chuck with a smaller set of jaws because it's got a it's threaded for one inch. I'm using a threaded adapter just because it's very convenient. Uh, it's easier to use a threading adapter than changing the insert. Now so we're going ahead and screwing this on my record power SC3 chuck. You can see how out around the rim is from that ghost image, so I'm cleaning it up with a, a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, a small one. And you can see, uh, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the inside with the bowl gouge. This is, video is not on making a bowl, so I'm, but I'm showing you using a scraper to clean up some of the ripples inside. Okay, so we're going to use this cove tool. Make a tiny little cove here. that's clean enough I'm going to skip the uh, sanding and we're going to come after that now with our round burr and long burr put the round ball in it and that will just fit in that cove lower this just a bit Slow the speed down to, in this case, maybe 500 or so. Press into it hard. And that's got a very nice, nice look to it. And now I'm going to use the other end of this tool. It's a little, sh it's a little more pointy than my regular pointed tool, but I think it will it'll do that detail on each side a little bit better. Again, this is a scraper. Get speed up a little bit to maybe close to a thousand. And I'm just going to come in here and just put it there. Come in here at a little bit of an angle. Put it there. 
and now I've got a very nice little detail on this uh, this tiny little little bowl that looks looks nice. Now here's another te uh, technique I want to show you. Uh, you might not have thought about it. instead of using a gilt cream for texturing for something like this. I'm going to use uh, an exotic piece of wood. I couldn't tell you what this is. Uh, some kind of rosewood, blackwood, coca boa, but I'm going to just use this. We'll get some friction and let the resin do the work, but we're going to hopefully let it color a little bit. So we're just going to See, in just a moment, I've transferred some of that resin from that exotic wood in here into that texture. It's kind of just kind of kick it up a, a notch without any any serious effort. I like that. Okay, here's an outside view of that bowl showing the top rim and the side rim, and I also used some wood on it. Here I am. Uh, sometimes when you sand the bottom of a bowl, you might get a little ring, and, and I disguise that. Instead of trying to sand it out, I just use the marker on it. Here I am cutting a cove for that, uh, using this rotary texturing tool in that cove with a, with a ball cutter, using that little, little cove tool we've used before. Here's the ball cutter at a slightly upward angle, cutting on the front leading leading edge to near, the, near the top, but not at the very tip. And there it is. Uh, not, a, not a bad little feature. Let's see if we can't punch it up just a little bit with a point tool. Always put a little decorating feature next to your texture with a with some type of point tool or the corner of a skew. Like in this case, I'm using that round and then I'm using this uh, non-woven abrasive pad to get rid of the frizzies, kind of burnish it a little bit. Sandpaper would, would, would tend to deteriorate it. Here's an example of just a little small Bradford pear ring bowl, about four inches across with a nice pattern on the rim. That tiny cove with a spindle gouge and a side grain. the ball. It looks looks very nice. And we're gonna punch it up. Leave a small frame. And then we can do it again on the other side. slightly larger coat. Low. When you do have adjoining patterns, make sure you got enough wall there that you're not going to break through. Because we've got a little bit bigger cove. Speed down by 500. And we've got a pattern on this side. I wonder if we bend it over here, come in the other direction. That kind of a herringbone pattern that uh, that just touches in the middle, and so we could boundary that, boundary that by just separating those two. That's an interesting an interesting pattern. Let's try the cylinder pattern. Whoa, baby! Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> That sucker was hot. Uh, not very pronounced because I couldn't get enough edge on it. Um, I can't 
came up like this. Let's see what that does. gives us the little kind of mark similar that you'd get from a Sorby spiraling and texturing tool up on its corner, up on the edge. If you like this video, hit the, hit the like button and subscribe. If you've got a friend that's uh, interested in wood turning or is a wood turner and is not, doesn't watch YouTube videos, I'd appreciate it if you'd share one of my videos with them that you feel like that they might be interested in. Last week I did a video on actually making this this tool, so if you missed that, you can find that the link above. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.